Okay, so hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about the consumer's utility maximization problem for perfect complements or for complements preferences. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to talk about the most general solution, and then I'm going to walk through a numerical example. Okay, so assuming our consumer has complements preferences, this means that utility function is going to be of this form. So we're supposing utility over the consumption of good X and consumption of good Y is just going to be whatever is the smaller of alpha times X and beta times Y. We'll assume a generic budget constraint because I want to give us the general sort of generic perfect complements demands. So the generic budget constraint would just be the price of X times the consumption of X plus the price of Y times the consumption of Y. And of course this part that's just your expenditure on X. This here is your expenditure on good Y. And your total expenditure is going to be equal to your income if we're on the budget line. We want to find demands. We want to find our Marshallian demands, which will be in the following form. It'll be the optimal selection of good X, depending on the price of the two goods and income. Same thing for good Y. So we'll set up the consumer's utility maximization problem. So we want to maximize utility by choosing X and Y. The utility function is going to be the minimum, of course, of whatever is smaller, alpha times x and beta times y, subject to our budget constraint. This is not going to be a situation where we are able to use calculus, because as you notice here, these utility preferences, these uh, the level sets of the utility function or our indifference curves are going to be kinked. They're going to be, they're going to have a uh, corner that's going to be a non-differentiable point. So instead, we take an a, a, an alternative strategy, which is we want to find the ray emanating from the origin that's going to go through the corners of all the indifference curves, and we'll understand that that's where any solution has to be. So essentially, we're trying to find the intersection between the ray through the origin that goes through the corners of these indifference curves that crosses the budget constraint. So that is what we are trying to do. I'll show a picture of that for my numerical example in a little bit. So how do we do this? Well, essentially, we go to the utility function, you replace this comma with an equal sign, solve for y, and this is going to be the line. This is going to give us the ray through the origin that's going to collect the corners of our indifference curves. Here you notice I've solved for x, y. Well, once you found this relationship, you want to sub substitute it into the budget constraint to find the optimal demand for that particular good or for the other particular good. So, okay, here I've got this relationship solved for x, I'm going to substitute in and in place of x, I'm going to write beta over alpha times y, right? So instead of y or x, instead of x, I'm going to have beta over alpha times y. And then over here, still just have price of y times y equals income. The next thing, it's just algebra. Now we need to solve for y. So how do I do this? Well, I'm going to stare at this and I'm going to say, oh, I can factor out a y. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I can divide I can divide through and uh, oops, so I should actually say what I've done first. So as I'm doing this, I'm realizing I've skipped a step. What is it? We gotta multiply everything through by alpha first. Why? That simplifies the math, right? So if I multiply through by alpha, this alpha cancels, I get an alpha PY here and then I'll get an alpha M. Then I'll factor out my Y and then I've got something that I can divide through. And this will give me my generic perfect or my generic complements, Marshallian demand for good Y. What about for good X? Well, now instead I'm gonna substitute out for Y. I'm gonna put in alpha over beta X instead of my Y. And I'm gonna do something similar. I'm gonna multiply through by beta, cool. Now I'm gonna factor out my X because there's an X here, X here. And then I'm gonna divide through by beta PX plus alpha PY. Notice that's the same denominator as we had over here. That's gonna be generically true. And then my numerator is just gonna be this beta M. All right, so this is solving for my demand. How do I know that I want to divide through by this stuff? Or how do I know I want to solve for X? We're trying to find my demand for good X, right? The last thing I want to say is as we're staring at this generic form of our perfect of our complements preference structure, notice we have alpha X, we have beta Y, and then our demands is Y is equal to, well, look, the denominators are the same here. I have alpha M, right? We switched, switched the coefficients. And here I have X is equal to beta M. Right, so we switch the coefficients in the optimal demands and uh, for the for the numerator. Right, so here we have alpha, and here we have beta in the numerator, and the denominators for the both are the same. Income always appears in the numerator; it's a normal good. 
Um, anyway, so it, it takes some time, kind of reflect on our generic demands for goods X and Y, and uh, try to pick up on some of the patterns that I was just expressing a second ago. Okay, so here's our notice for complements. Our demands are just these, which we have now solved for. And now I wanna talk a little bit more. So I said kind of like off the cuff, the these are generically representing a normal good. How do we know that? Well, let's pay attention to how these, how changes in the right-hand side is gonna affect the demand, which is the left-hand side. Okay, so notice the denominators get bigger for increases in either PX or PY, right? Denominators are gonna get bigger if either PX or PY gets larger. And for larger denominators, we get a smaller fraction, meaning as the denominator gets larger, this entire ratio gets smaller, which means the demand for that respective good gets smaller. That's exactly what we'd expect from complements behavior. We know that from like the principles class, as the price of a good rises, you buy less of that good by the law of demand, and you also buy less of any complementary good. Remember, price change of a complementary good was a demand shifter. Okay, and then my comment, my last comment is, that's exactly what we'd expect from complements. So now let me go back and we think about our definition of a normal good. So a normal good is one where as income rises, demand increases as well. So look, look what happens if income rises, right? Just think of taking the partial derivative of this right-hand side with respect to income. Because income's appearing in the numerator, that's actually not a very difficult derivative. It's gonna be positive, right? And that's just gonna tell us that this is a normal good. So is, so is, uh, so is why. Okay, so that's the generic, per that's a generic complements preference structure, right? So let's see a numeric example. And so I'm actually gonna build this up with, uh, I'm gonna build this up kind of carefully. So I'm gonna build this up from scratch actually. So suppose I actually don't give us the utility function and we have to find it. So for this example, we'll say, suppose Anne consumes two cookies with every one coffee. And I'm just gonna be nice here and I'm gonna say, let's make cookies X and let's make coffee Y. So we'll assume the price of cookies is five or three, the price of coffee is five, income is M. We wanna find Anne's optimal consumption bundle, X and Y. So the first thing we have to do is recover Anne's utility function. Well, Anne is gonna consume in fixed proportions. How do we know that? It says Anne is gonna consume two cookies with every coffee, right? This is saying that Anne's not gonna be happy with two cookies unless Anne also has one coffee. And Anne is not gonna be happy with one coffee unless Anne also has two cookies. Moreover, Anne's not gonna be happy with two cookies uh, or with two coffees if Anne doesn't have four cookies, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna list all the efficient, non-wasteful bundles for Anne, right? So suppose we gave Anne three cookies and one coffee, that's wasteful because that third cookie isn't actually doing anything to Anne's well-being. So instead what we wanna do is we wanna come up with all the non-wasteful bundles, all the ones that actually match this preference structure, match the, uh, the, the fixed proportion that Anne is desiring. So if we want two cookies with every one coffee, the possible bundles would be like two cookies, one coffee, four cookies, two coffees, six cookies, three coffees, and so on. Clearly we can represent this relationship here as x equals two y, right? So x equals two y, let's find y multiplied by two, that's my x, right? Find, find my y multiplied by two, that's my x, cool. This is gonna give rise to the following utility function. So remember I had said before, in you know a little bit earlier is that when we're going from the utility function trying to find the this is actually going to be the ray through the origin that collects the the corners of my indifference curves i just replace the comma with an equal sign here i'm doing the opposite i'm going from an equal sign placing a comma there right i'm just dropping this right down into this minimum operator and there's my utility function Okay, so suppose we had incorrectly written, for example, the opposite. So it's actually, and so the preference structure that Anne's given, that we've, we've been given from Anne is, is gonna be the following. So two cookies with uh, one coffee, which means minimum, Anne's well-being is gonna be whichever is a smaller of X and two Y justified above. Suppose incorrectly we had written two X and Y. Well, that's not gonna work because let's just take a bundle that Anne definitely would like, two cookies and one coffee, drop it into our utility function, let's evaluate. Let's see what two cookies and one coffee gets Anne in terms of utility. Well, two times two is four, and then one here. Anne's utility is gonna be whichever is a smaller of four and one. Oh, it's only gonna be one. 
So there's waste here because Anne has invested money on obtaining this good without increasing Anne's utility. So, but we already know that this has to be a bundle that Anne would have liked. We did this by construction. Two cookies and one coffee is something that from above Anne said Anne would like. And this utility function is telling us that Anne would not actually, that this is, that this is not an optimal consumption pattern because there's going to be wastefulness. Well, of course it's not because this is the wrong form of the utility function. This was the correct one. So what's the point? Well, as we're backing out Anne's utility function from an example like this, I would just make this list of optimal bundles and then get the linear equation that represents the bundles, replace the equal sign with a comma, and then we've got, we'll drop this into our utility function. And then verify, pick a bundle we know that Anne likes and then see if it actually works. If not, then you know that you've done something wrong and then just uh, go back and revise. Here's what would happen if we took this incorrect utility function. This bundle would be out here. So this would be like two cookies, one coffee, and this is on the wing of this utility function because this is a steeper line. This is the line y equals 2x. It's not the line that we want. This would be wasteful. We actually always want, the, we want to be consuming on the corners right here. So this picture is the indifference curves that correspond to this utility function, but that's actually not what we're interested in. In reality, the bundle 2, 1 should look like this. Right? It should be right at the corners. Cool, that looks better. And so I say, great. Now we need to find Ann's optimal bundle, given the prices we were told of and given this income. So we can make a budget constraint, 3x plus 5y is equal to m. We have our utility function from before. From this, we recover the line through all solutions as y is equal to 1 half x. And you're like, wait a second, that doesn't seem familiar. Oh no, it is. So go back up here and we see the line was x is equal to 2y. Yeah, so y is equal to 1 half x is, this, is the actual line. And so I'm going to substitute in 1 half x for y, solve for x, and that'll give me Ann's demand for x. That's just algebra, right? So making the substitution. And we determine that Ann would like 2m divided by 11 units of x. And then we can make the substitution we had from before. We can, instead of x, we can drop in 2y into our budget constraint, and we can get Ann's demand for y. Right? And so we find Anne would actually want m over 11. It's going to be Anne's demand for good y. Now, once we've got my optimal bundle, let's just drop this into the utility function and evaluate and make sure that we have the same thing on both sides of that comma within our minimum op operator. Sure enough, we will. So let's evaluate the bundle. 2m. Oh, shoot. I should have an m here. I should draw an m. This has to have an m. This should be 2m from up here. Anyway, so 2m right here over 11 and then m over 11. Drop this in here. This is going to be x. This is 2 times y. And uh, let's see. This is going to give us, oh, I, I lost my m again. This is supposed to be 2m over 11. That's horrible. Anyway, so this is, so I've circled here. This indeed is our optimal bundle. And if I, if I verified and if I, if I had not lost my m, this, this should be indeed Anne's utility level is gonna be 2m over 11, right? You can see that just from here. I don't, I, let's make this look like this there. Now it almost looks like it's supposed to. Anne's utility, when consuming the bundle x, uh, 2m over 11 units of good x and m over 11 units of good y is gonna be 2m over 11. All right, very good. So I could go ahead and conclude here. And you noticed here, I'm talking about substitute preferences. No, that's gonna be for the next video. So stop here.